Hi, this is my report on fecal transplantation for TechCom. Final report. So for the agenda today, I'm going to talk about the fecal transplantation for the C. difficile infection, Clostridium difficile, um, how it increases patient recovery times, fewer recurring infections, and increased patient satisfaction. The solution is the fecal transplantation. There will be the budget project budget will be on the slides, and a conclusion and a question and answer period. So a fecal transplantation basically is the cutting edge method to treat a horrible bacterial infection. It is much safer than antibiotics, it is much more effective, and it is actually quite easy to administer. So this is the C. difficile infection. It is a bacteria that is actually caused by, by taking an antibiotic. It is an over abundance of a bacteria that takes over, disrupting the natural flora and fauna of the, in the gut. It thickens patients. It, it's a nosocomial infection, which that means that it's often gotten by patients whilst in the hospital or in a nursing home. They did not come with it, but they get it in the hospital or nursing home, which if you get it in the hospital or nursing home, Medicare does not pay for the cure because they feel like that is something that you should have prevented takes a long, long time to get rid of with antibiotics. People die and they also get recurrences. When you enter a patient's room, you have to put on a gown and gloves because of contact precautions. So there's extra effort every time you enter a patient's room. So if you're gonna have to be running back and forth in and out of the patient's room, you have to be very efficient and you have to, be, you have to be, know that this is how you have to enter the patient's room each time. C. difficile is about the only thing that is not killed by that foam bacteria that's all over the hospital. We use it going into the patient's room and we use it going out of the patient's room to sanitize our hands. But C. difficile is not killed by that. So every time you leave a patient's room who has C. difficile, you have to wash your hands. And I don't know if you've ever washed your hands thoroughly and then seen if there's any bacteria still on them. No matter how well you wash your hands, it is virtually impossible to scrub everything off. So that is one reason why it's so easily passed on whilst in the hospital. Meanwhile, the patient is just getting sicker and sicker. A lot of money is being spent, a lot of patient, a lot of effort on the part of the staff, a lot of money. Um, and meanwhile, the patient is losing weight, having chronic diarrhea, feeling like crap, um, very weak. So this is the solution, it's fecal transplantation. It is exactly what it seems. You, feces go from one person to another. A person who is healthy, typically now in, in a, at this time, what is used is a family member or a friend's donor feces. You just actually get it from somebody who's healthy. We will put them through a, a screening process, a, both in a questionnaire and with a laboratory. So the laboratory will screen the feces to make sure that those patients do not have any disease that, that they could transfer to the um, sick patient. So but this is actually just a picture of the feces. So the thing is that it's so quick, uh, it's hard to believe that a person could be sick for six to eight months, debilitating, constantly getting sicker and sicker and within 24 hours start to feel better. Yes, they aren't 100% better because they've been so weakened from the C. diff, but they actually have now restored the flora and fauna in their, in their gut and they start to feel better. And it, it, costs, it costs less than conventional care because it's so quick. Today it looks like this. As I mentioned, it's a donor feces issue. In the future, it was gonna look, it's gonna look more like this. There have already studies been done, have, already studies have been done that used donor feces. So someone could come in and donate their feces, just a volunteer. It is screened. The actual probiotic that, that the doctors need for the C. difficile transfer is taken out and put in a capsule form and frozen. And then when a patient comes with C. difficile, you can just take that. That's not how we're gonna start our program because that's not how it's done everywhere right now. But the Fecal transplantation for C. difficile is such a quick changing thing that if you looked five years ago on the internet, you would have found nothing. And now every time I look it up, I see that it's changing. It's because it's so fast and so effective and also less money. So for the budget, we will need it at least in the beginning. 
colonoscopy equipment because it is often administered through colonoscopy equipment. Of course, computer equipment, laboratory accessories because we are going to be screening and partnering with a, with a company to screen, but we will have to um, initially get the um, tubing that the feces go in, the transfer tubing, and then we have to hire personnel to help administer to start this program. So what, what will this do for the patients? It will decrease recovery time. It's going to increase the overall, overall well-being of the patient. It's going to decrease the stress level of both the staff and the patients and the family because the patients will get better quicker. And it will cost both the patient and, and intercoastal facility less money. And it will improve patient satisfaction. We could be known as the nursing home that doesn't have patients with C. diff. That would be nice. These are my references. Anybody have any questions? Okay, thanks very much.